we should tell the kids about the IVF treatment tonight? If we can get them all in one place at the same time. I hope they're OK about it. I reckon they be made up. What about Anthony? He's not been himself lately. I put a smile on his face. I'll get back as soon as I can. What's up? I still don't know who to believe her or Jimmy. Maybe that's why we shouldn't get involved, eh? We're already involved. They've both confided in us. No. He's told me what's happened and she's told you a pack of lies, which is why we're going to keep our distance. It's trouble we don't need at the moment, agreed? Yeah. I mean it, Di. I don't want you going anywhere near that woman. OK. See you later. Bye. Carly's forgotten a PE kiss. Oh, she's got a head like a sieve, that girl. I wish I could go away somewhere. And this house is doing me brain in. Not the only one. How long is it going to go on for, Mum? It's your father you should be asking, not me. I mean, the kids just want a normal, quiet life. No chance of that with you two, is there? Um, can I have a coffee? Take away, please. OK. Yeah. Come on, sis. I know you really like Christy, but, well, maybe it wasn't meant to be. Like Muriel and Deborah Van Ark. Thanks. I don't want to talk about it. I don't even want to hear his name, all right? Hey? What was Romeo Murray playing at last night? Banging on me door. The early hours of the morning. Oh, Mr. McGrace, you come to check up with me and Fred. Oh, am I talking to myself here, or what? Don't. She's obsessed. Yeah, uh, so was I when I was woken up by a skid mark of a fella. Ex-fella. She's dumped him. Go away. Mm. I think she's already starting to regret it. Not busy, are you? No, no. I'm glad you called. Could do with a nice cup of tea and a good gab. Actually, there was something I wanted to ask you about. Oh, put the kettle on. Can we just talk? Yeah? Is everything OK? Uh, no. Not really. I shouldn't be talking to you. Never mind letting you kiss me. Oh, I'm so sorry. My flat is still trash, though, thanks to you and your sidekick. Don't be blaming Jerome. It was my idea to go on a source of your divvy nibs. I was only trying to help, honest. Mm. Friends. Hmm. Friends. Great. And you're staying here. We'll see. <laughs> Jimmy reckons the real reason the marriage is breaking up is because you were carrying on with another woman. I wasn't. You could have told me. I wouldn't have thought bad of you. I didn't tell you because it's not true. But why would your own husband make up something like that? Because you know what he's been like. He got confused. So this woman doesn't even exist? Yes, yeah, she does, but she was just a friend. Well, not even that, really. So it was all in his imagination? Yes. Do you realise what it's like being accused of something like this? Why don't you tell your mate the name of this woman you didn't sleep with? Don't, Jimmy, please. It was Shelley. Her daughter's girlfriend. She admitted it. I haven't imagined any of this. No matter what she says. Some big hunks just dropped these off for the gorgeous Raven Hair Barmaid. <laughs> hey, said he does his army for ages. Oh, Lance, the lovely, but you shouldn't have. Someone else will come along, you know. Someone who really deserves you. Who am I going to find around here, eh? I'm sick of scallies like Christy Murray, Lance. I want someone with a bit of class, you know, like one of these new men in magazines. I mean, I can only see me coming home from work to find Christy waiting with a homemade quiche and a sensitive massage, can you? No, you'd soon get fed up with all that, Leah. Yeah, but I'd like to give it a try, at least. You find your prince charming. 
promise. Maybe you should have just stuck with Prince Charles. Ugh, I wish she'd snap out of it. She's putting customers off the food. She really thought there was a future for her and Christy. Nah, he was only interested in getting his leg over. And even then, he couldn't remember which flat she lived in. Yeah, well, I won't be making that mistake again. Good, because I don't want him or anyone else knocking on my door in the early hours, especially with this Fred business going on. Oh, you don't have to worry about the immigration. They'd never knock that late. Well, I hope so, for Frederico's sake. Otherwise, he is going to be on the next plane back to Brazil. Look, even if they do, well, we could always say we're staying in man because you two had had a row or something. Simple. You've made a right fool of me. Coming round to my house, pouring out all your troubles. You were just using me. I wasn't. I swear he's got us all wrong, love. You all have. The only thing I got wrong was trusting you. Look, at least have the decency to hear me out. I don't want anything to do with you from now on. Please, Diana. I, I can explain this all. I've had enough of your lies. You make me sick. All that stuff about how much you disapproved of Lindsay and Shelley being together. I bet you were just jealous. No, no I, I, of course I wasn't. Listen, love, you, you've got to believe me. Why should I? You're a lying, scheming cow. Hey, hang on, who do you think you are? You don't know me or anything about me. I know enough. I'm not having the likes of you looking down on me. You know, it's no wonder Jimmy wanted to divorce you. There he was in hospital trying to recover, and you're in bed with another woman. I wasn't like that. Trying to blame it on the poor fella's illness. No wonder he went do lally mathy to you. Hey, you mind your own business. You made it my business, coming round to my house and turning the waterworks on. Women like you make me sick, betraying your husbands, not to mention your kids. Don't forget, I had to pick up the pieces when Marty and the kids were dumped by a selfish cow, just like you. Don't you dare judge me. You don't know what I've had to put up with over the years. You're not the only one who's had it hard, you know. Yeah, well, compared to me, love, you've had it cushy, I'm telling you. You don't know what it's like to suffer. What? Isn't losing a baby enough? You cold-hearted bitch. Hey, hey, whoa! Hey, hey, ah! hey, 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 ah! hey, 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 what's all this about? It's about her being a liar and a hypocrite. It's a bit strong, isn't it? You haven't heard the half of it. That mouth of yours shut. Come on, ask her. See if she'll tell you what she's been up to with a fancy woman. Hey, Jackie, it's back in it. Back in here, Jackie. Ow! Give over, will you? What's going on here? It was here. Sleeping with your daughter's girlfriend. You're depraved. Right in the street. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your father's caused this. He's spreading all these lies about me. Oh, it's never your fault, is it? Come on, get yourself inside. You can't do it to me anymore, so now you're starting on the neighbours. so excited about? You'll never guess what I've just heard. Go on. Jackie Corkill has only been dabbling in a bit of the old femme de la femme. You mean with Shirley? You already know. Oh, the Titanic sunk. Well, this must be a first, eh? You keeping your trap shut for more than ten seconds. Well, I'm discreet, me. Actually, it's gossip that I wanted to talk to you about. Go on. You and L. We met, we fell madly in love, he popped the question, and I said yes. Give over. He's another one who bats for the other side. You're just helping to keep him here for Lancy boy, aren't you? Do you mind? That's my husband you're talking about. Yeah, which makes him my grandson's stepfather. Fred and I are very happy. We are madly in love. Listen, I know you better than anyone. And if you had fallen for some South American lover boy, we'd all be getting it rammed down our throats. You've hardly made a fuss over this so-called wedding. If it was all legit, you'd have had the biggest news since Charlie and Di. Only with a bigger frock. Yeah, well, the old me would have. Look, Bev, this isn't just about our Josh. Now, you might find this hard to believe, but I actually care about what happens to you and all. 
What I've been through lately has made me look at life a bit differently. And, well, I don't know. Maybe it's in you, me, but... I'd hate to see you get hurt or get yourself into any trouble. So come on out with it. What exactly have you landed yourself in this time? I suppose the news will be spreading like it's in a nursery by now. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me. You brought all this on yourself. Do you know what? I can't even be bothered arguing anymore. You can all think what you like. I know the truth. I can't believe I was taken in by her. I fell for all her lies. Well, maybe you shouldn't have got involved in the first place. She came here with all her troubles. I couldn't just turn her away. Yeah, I bet you wish you had it done now, though, eh? Oh, too right. As if we haven't got enough on our plate already. If the IVF works, the last thing we'll need is a feud with the next-door neighbours. Well, let's just hope they're so busy fighting with themselves, they can't be bothered with us. Do you know what could happen to you if you get caught? Well, we won't, will we? We've made sure everything's above board. If the immigration starts sniffing around, they'll bumble you right away. We've got wedding photos and everything. That means nothing to them. Anyone can take a few blank snapshots. If they really start investigating this, you could end up in jail. Prison? Nah. All right. Let's say that you do get away with it. What about the legal implications? Like what? Like everything that comes with being married. Alfred is now your next of kin, you know, so if anything unexpected happens to you, he will end up a very wealthy widower. Our Josh would end up with nothing. Thought of that. Yeah, well, it strikes me you haven't thought about any of this. But is it really worth risking a stretch inside? Or your son's future just to keep those two happy? After I've picked up Carly, I'll go to our vows and get Wills. The least time to spend here, the better. Oh, I suppose that's my fault. Well, it wasn't me or me dad. You were scrapping in the street with Diane Murray. I have to put up with all this. I've done nothing wrong. Can't you do anything before your family falls apart for good? It already has. Things can't go on like this, Mum. I mean, look at us. We do nothing but fight. You've even started on next door now. You can't blame me for all this. It was you who decided to tell me, Dad, about what happened with you and Shelley. So now you've got to sort this mess out before it is too late. Maybe I should just move somewhere else. Well, where will you go then? I'll ask around in work, see if anyone knows of any flats. Listen, you're always welcome to stay at ours until you find somewhere, you know. Oh, I don't know. Well, why not? I mean, it's not as though it's anything permanent, like. You're the first man I've been involved with since Frank died. Moving in would be a massive step, even if it was just for a little while. Well, listen, what's the difference between staying one night and a few weeks? Lots. I'm not sure I'm ready, particularly with Jerome involved. Oh, Jerome just wants you to be happy. Listen, the offer's there. At least think about it, yeah? <laughs> This is not a game, Bev. You've got too much at stake to risk it all on those two. Yeah, well, I can't back down now, can I? I've already agreed to help Fred stay in the country. This marriage of convenience sounds like one big inconvenience to me. You're just overreacting. Everything will be fine. OK, OK, but don't say I didn't warn you. But just make sure that you realise what the consequences are. If this all comes on top. So what do you fancy to drink? Just a mineral water, thanks. Well, how about something stronger in case we need to celebrate it? Celebrate what? You coming to stay at ours? I haven't said I will yet. I haven't said you won't either. I just don't want to rush into anything. I was married to your cousin for nearly 22 years. Hey, Father, we both love Frank. But it's time to move on. I, mean, I don't know about you, but this feels great to me. If it goes wrong, it could ruin everything before we even get started. I wanted to take that risk. I knew. Are you sure about this? I wouldn't ask if I wasn't. OK, then. Looks like you got yourself another lodger. For a few weeks, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. We'll be choking each other's tongue. Going on with Beth. I'm sure they had an antics and we're talking about me. You? Why? I 
I don't know. Bev's been giving me some funny looks. Yeah, something's up. I can feel it. Returns of any service. I don't call her now. I am fed up a lovey dovey couples. They knock me sick. It's like that when you just split up with someone. Everywhere you look, people seem to be head over heels in love. So he hasn't even called. Oh, it's nothing but a, a quick lay to him. Oh, Leanne, forget about Christy. He's history. You should be looking forward to meeting Mr. Wright. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I can't believe someone has managed to upset the formidable Leanne Powell. Well, I just suddenly realised that we fell as a waste of space. Well, then you should be celebrating, I'm crying. Here. Use this. It is clean. Thanks. Jimmy. Jimmy, I know you can hear me. Open the door, please. I want to talk to you. OK, then, at least listen to what I've got to say. I know you think things have gone too far this time, but we can still save our marriage. All you've got to do is trust me like I've trusted you God knows how many times. All that went on that night between me and Shelley was one person trying to comfort another. I swear on our William's life, it was nothing more. Let's just forget everything that's been said over the past few weeks and start talking to each other properly, Jimmy, because if we don't, it really will be over for good. Surely in your heart of hearts, you don't want to throw away everything we fought so hard for. Jimmy? Do you remember when you first told me you loved me? It was outside the she club on a wet Tuesday night. <laughs> we were only bits of kids, but it's still the most important and magical moment of my life. Every special memory I've got I've shared with you. Our first home together. That little flat over the fruit and veg shop. And when we moved into the Corpy house and I was pregnant, we were totally broke, but we didn't need anything except each other, did we? We were so happy when our Lindsay was born. I'll never forget the look of love and pride when you first held her. You cried your eyes out. We both did. I could talk about the bad memories as well, you know, there's been so many of them. But they say it's all the bad things that make you stronger and bring you closer together, don't they? No wonder we've been so close over the years. Until now, that is. All the good times and all the bad, Jim. Everything we've shared together. Surely we don't want to throw it away now, do we? Not after we've been through all this. Jimmy! Well, that's it. I've pleaded with you. I've even sworn on our little boy's life and you still won't talk to me. What do I have to do to save this marriage, Jimmy? What do I have to say to you? <laughs> Jimmy, please don't let us end like this. You and this family are my life. You mean everything to me. <laughs> I love you, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy.
Feeling better now? Yeah, thanks. Um, I'll give you a hanky back when I've washed it. Uh, it's all right. It's, uh, it's an old one anyway. Where have you been? Oh, I just got a bit upset, but I'm OK now. Are we sure? Yeah. That Dr. Dadden's really nice, isn't he? Mm, nice. Do you know what, lads? I think I got them all wrong. When you two have finished your family conference, there's a table over there needs cleaning. Well, do we? She's cheered up, hasn't she? Oh, no, she's just put a brave face on. Bless her. Good. I was sick of seeing them open. It um, looked like Scary Ron was giving you a hard time before. Is everything OK? It's quite nice, actually. Well, for him, anyway. <laughs> but that's nice that um, I think to see him giving you grief. So nothing's wrong, then? Look, me and you need to have a little bit of a chat about this whole Fred business. How do you mean? Well, we're going to have to be more careful. What if that was the immigration banging on the door last night? They'd have collared us as soon as they saw you two skipping out of your flat and you're matching gym jams. Oh, but that's not going to happen, though. Too right it isn't. I am not risking prison for anyone. From now on, I am Mrs McLaughlin Gonzalez, which means Fred moves into my flat with all his stuff. Is there any need? Things are fine as they are. Don't worry. You can still have your conjugal visits. You can spend as much time as you want in my flat, but from now on to the outside world, me and Fred are a happily married couple. I suppose you're right. Ooh, hopefully this will all be over soon. Yeah. Hey, and then we can start trying for a baby. Oh, so you've still got your heart set on that, then? Too right. Part of the reason I've gone through all this is to get our Josh a little brother or a sister. I want a baby, Lance. It's part of the deal. <laughs> Jimmy. If it's a divorce she wants, you can have it. It's about getting a divorce. What's up? The heat. There's someone being upsetting you. I wonder if the immigration comes snooping around. Oh, they won't. But well, what if they do? Fred's on his way home and I'm in deep trouble. Look, I want to be with me family. You should have stayed in hospital until you could use crutches like the doctors told you to. And all that from Tuesday at 8. Next Friday at 8.30, a weekend challenge if ever there was one. Can you live without sex? A preview coming up. Attempting offering next on 4. Friday comedy begins with friends. Have your solicitors be able to see me this morning? It's about getting a divorce. Right, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Bye. Who's that on the phone, Mum? I was, um... Uh... Making an appointment to go and see a solicitor this morning. A solicitor? Yeah. Giving your father his divorce. All right. It's for the best, look. I'm telling her, I heard it with my own ears. Even Bev confirmed it. She should know, shouldn't she? She shared a flat with that Shelley woman. Well, I still don't believe it. Not Jackie Corkill. I've got everything ready for Beth. The bottles are done and there's plenty of clean nappies. Thanks, but I could have done all that. No, it's OK. We all do family while I get some stuff ready for Mike. Yeah, sure. Come on, sweetheart. Oh. That poor girl's close to exhaustion. As if she hasn't got enough to do with work and the baby, as well as looking after Mike. It's all too much. Yeah, well, let's just stay out of it, eh, Anthony? I mean, it is their business. Dad? Oh, right, yeah. Could you uh, give us a hand? I need to. Uh, I'll get out the way now. Soon I can get 
get up those stairs, the better. Yeah, well, you can't go rushing things. Yeah, well, I feel last on hand here, having to leave the room every time I want to go to bog. No, she doesn't mind, honest. Yeah, well, I do. It's embarrassing. Come on. Where's Fred? Oh, he's having a lion. Uh, I thought we said he was going to move in today. Oh, I know, yeah, but, well, he looks so peaceful lying there. And what if the immigration comes snooping round? Oh, they won't. Well, what if they do? Fred's on his way home and I'm in deep trouble. OK, point taken. I'm sorry, Lance, but either he moves in full time or the deal is off. I am risking far too much to take any more chances. Oh, I'll see you later. No, wait, I'll walk round with you. Something I want to talk to you about. What? Me and your dad have decided to go with the IVF treatment. That's brilliant. Oh, I hope it works. You really deserve it. Oh, thanks, love. Come on, I'll tell you all about it on the way round. OK. Is that Leo Johnson? Yeah. I thought you didn't like him anymore. I don't. I just don't want to see him. Especially in my uniform. Hiya, Hubbikins. Welcome to Castle Bed, Fred. Shouldn't you be carrying him over the threshold? No chance. He's a big lad, my other half. Do you want me to hang those up for you? Oh, no, you're all right. I can manage. Oh, sorry. Um, we'll put this stuff in your spare room and then the rest of his clothes will have to go in your wardrobe. Good idea. We're really grateful for all you've done for us. Look, I know it's a pain, but at least no-one can say we're not sharing a marital home. Um, oh, I'll give him the place a once-over, so it should be nice and clean for you. Oh, he's taking this very well, your Lance, hasn't he? I thought you'd be dead upset about Fred moving out. Bev, I am made up. They're starting to get on my nerves. And I'll be able to get a good night's sleep at last. They've been keeping me awake with all the noise they're making. Hi, Jack. You all right? Yeah. yeah. My marriage is in tatters. Half the neighbourhood's talking about me. Same as ever, really, you know. Yeah, listen, um, I haven't mentioned anything to anyone, you know, about what Diane Muddy was saying, like. I'm past caring, though. Things really that bad between you and Soft Lad? Yeah, and me. Uh... On my way to see a solicitor now. He can have his divorce, the family given up. Do you know what? After everything he's put you through, he's got a cheap demand of a divorce. Just because you had a bit of a fling. I mean, it wouldn't mind. It wasn't even with another fella, was it? I've never cheated on Jimmy with anyone. No, but, uh, well, you and I were very close, weren't we? <laughs> I never slept with you. No, I know you never. And in a way, you know, I'm sort of relieved because I always thought that that might have been something to do with me, you know, but now I realise I... Ron, I never slept with you because I didn't want to betray my husband. No, I know, but what I'm saying is it's no wonder that things never went any further between us. You know, with you liking women, you know. Do you know what? I'm glad I never slept with you because you're repulsive. Hey, Jack, I might not be your type, love, but a lot of normal women find me very attractive. In the dream. You know what? That's the trouble with you lot. You hate men. Oh, look at the place. It's dead. We need to start attracting people during the day, not just of a night. Bev, have you ever thought about getting computers in? You know, so people can go on the internet? Someone else said that. Well, I reckon it'd be great for business. Since when have you been interested in the internet? Oh, I'd love to work with computers. Do you know, I can just see myself setting up websites and that kind of stuff. You don't know anything about it, though, do you? Well, I could easily learn. A new interest could really change things for me. Well, you want to have a word with your big mate Victoria over there? She'll be able to give you some advice. I might even ask myself about this computer thing. I'm not asking her for any favours. She looks at me like I'm a piece of doggy on a shoe. Oh, she's all right. Once you get to know her. Well, Dr. Darren's much nicer. I don't know why he puts up with her. Seem happy enough to me. Well, I reckon they're just putting it on. Can't see her keeping hold of him for much longer. Dad, it's me. It's open. I wish there was more memory on this. It's taken forever. Can I have a word, please? Yeah. As long as it's not about your mother. Or us giving it another go. It's obvious that it's not worth it. 
Well, not at the moment, anyway, but... Oh, don't you think you're rushing into this divorce? Love, we could wait a year, we could wait five years. I'll still feel the same. You don't know that. I do. As long as we're together, she'll hold me back. I know she's your mother, but that's the way I feel. She probably doesn't even know she's doing it. It's been going on that long. It's time we went our separate ways. What about Wills and Kylie? Hey, how do you think they're going to cope with all this? So what's the alternative? Put them through years of misery or get it over with while they're still young. Just imagine how hard it's going to be for them, watching you two go through a bit of divorce. Not as hard as watching us trying to save a dead marriage. Sorry, it's the only answer. Thank you already for a nap, madam. Auntie, could you give us a hand outside? I feel like a bit of fresh air. I will do now. Just let me put Beth down. As anyone's concerned, that flat is the happy home of Mr. and Mrs. Gonzalez. Good, because if the immigration do come sniffing around, we'll be ready for them. Now, I've got stuff to do. I'll see you later. You okay? Yeah. I know this isn't perfect, me moving out, but if it eases Bev's worries, then it's worth it. We owe it to her. Oh, no. It's mad, though. You're coming all this way, and then you might happen to live next door. Yeah, but think of what's at the end of it. After all this, we can live together forever. There's no reason why you can't stay too, is there? Yeah, I felt mad. Good. Well, let's have a nice meal and a uh, early night. Sounds fun. <laughs> hey, maybe this isn't going to be so bad after all. <laughs> yeah. How was Dublin? Oh, Sam, you're the boss. Up here. Can you help me, please? Mike. All right, lad. Yeah, I just tipped it over. That's all. You could have really hurt yourself. No, I'm all right. Why didn't you wait? I was only putting the baby in a cot. Well, I thought I could manage by myself. Well, you can't, obviously. Yeah, all right, there's no need to kick off. Oh, yes, there is. Someone needs to put you straight. You should never have discharged yourself from hospital in the first place. You were nowhere near ready to come home. You what? Why are you being so selfish? Hang on a minute. Poor Rachel's exhausted running around after you. And it's not doing your father any good either, lifting you in and out of a wheelchair. We're just not equipped to have you at home. The hospital's got everything you need. Look, I want to be with me family. For your benefit or theirs. You got broken into when I was in hospital. And what could you have done about it? Well, at least I would have been here. That would you wait, lad. I wouldn't worry about it. Can't you see you're making a difficult situation ten times worse? Think of the pressure you're putting Rachel under. She wants me here. Oh, she might say that, but I doubt that's how she really feels. You should have stayed in hospital until you could use crutches like the doctors told you to. Then you'd have done the physio and you'd have been on your feet much quicker. All without having to put your wife and family through all this. You look knackered. You're working too hard. And you've got the little one to look after. I'm all right. Can't be easy having Mike home, either. He hated being in that hospital. Wouldn't he be better off in there? Maybe a lot less for you to cope with. Mm, he's much happier at home. And what about you? Oh, can't you just feel the temperature drop when those two are in the room together? Hey, did Ron tell you about Jackie and I muddy ragging each other around the clothes? Yeah. I still don't believe the room's better in Shelley, though. Hmm. The more than rumours. They're all true, believe you me. So it's all official now. The divorce is going ahead. I couldn't believe it. There I was, sitting talking to a solicitor discussing the end of my marriage. I haven't even done anything wrong. What's going to happen about Wills? It's obvious he'll stay with me. Even if your father tried to keep him no judge in the right mind and give him custody, he must know he wouldn't stand a chance. 
Just promise me you'll make all this as easy as you can on Wills. It's your father you should be talking to, not me. Here. Hiya. Busy day? Uh, not bad, thanks. Oh, it must be really interesting working with computers. It's OK. Where should we sit? Oh, I'd love to learn about technology in that. Really? Over there? Yeah, fine. I'll be with you in a sec. Lance, do you reckon if I had a plummy voice, I'd get a better job? There's nothing wrong with the voice you've got. And you're the best barmaid in Liverpool. Yeah, but I want to improve myself, get a proper career. Leanne, you're perfect the way you are. Don't even think about changing. Where do you reckon Miss Snotty Cow gets her clothes from? Not from Gracie Market, that's for sure. Howdy, Dr. D. Victoria. Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Oh, not so bad. I'm getting there, looking up. Looking up. <laughs> I know Bert likes her waifs and strays. Why does she put up with me now? Oh, she's not as bad as she used to be. Yeah, how come she's being so nice all of a sudden? I have no idea, but I certainly prefer things this way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right, what can I get you? A uh, bottle of dry white, please. Have you read the latest on the call kills? No. Looks like we're about to. Jackie has only gone and had some big passionate lesbian affair with that Shelley one. <laughs> Where did you hear that? Well, everyone knows. Apparently she had some big scrap on the clothes with Diane. Worry about it. No, you don't say. Hey, yeah. That outfit's gorgeous. Thanks. Yeah, really suit you? I got it from that shop on Matthew Street in town. Oh, it's lovely in there, isn't it? Right, I'll uh, bring your drinks right over. All right, lads. All right, officer. All right. How's it going, mate? Well, don't ask me. I'll just depress you. I'll take notice of him. He's doing sound. Back on his feet in no time. How about you? Yeah, great. Jamie Getz just got back from Dublin. Oh, nice one. Me and Jackie went over St. Pat's Six Day. Oh, no, it's me stalker. Hi, Liam. All right. Bought any CDs lately? Uh, not really, like, I've been too busy with work and that. I've started working at the garage. Oh, really? So, uh, it's good to go for a baby in Dublin, one. Lily Bordello was a sound with a boss night there a few years ago. If someone's got a crush on you there, mate. Yeah, your very own schoolie, eh? Yeah, that's it. So, uh, did you do much bevying then? Not as much as I wanted to. All Jackie wanted to do was go shopping. <laughs> She'd have been better going with Katie. You're joking, aren't you? And our Clinton never out of each other's sight. Yeah, made up for Katie, though. If anyone deserves it, it's her. What makes you say that? Oh, she just doesn't have much luck with fellas, that's all. How come? She just doesn't. She went out with many? Well, yeah, a few. So who did she go out with before our Clint? Um, a lad called Ryan Musgrove. No, it was Luke. Uh, what? Nothing. Come on. No, forget it. I won't say anything. Which one did she go out with? <sighs> Both of them. Both? At the same time? Yeah, but that Ryan deserved it, though. Yeah, and her and Luke are really into each other. For a while, anyway. Go away. Katie, two time and brothers, eh? Bit of a dark horse, that one. What's up? The heat for so? Has someone been upsetting you? No. Well, then what's brought all this on? I'm just a meth. Look at me. No, you're not. You're absolutely gorgeous. I'm a plain and ordinary no one who wears glasses and listens to music everyone else's mum was into years ago. No lad's ever gonna look at me. They will if they've got any sense. When I look at you, I see a lovely girl who's getting more beautiful by the day. You're an intelligent young woman who knows her own mind and you have your own unique views. <laughs> And a brilliant personality. OK, I'm biased, but I've got good taste, despite marrying your father. You're just saying that to make me feel better? I'm not. If we had a little girl, I'd be made up if she turned out like you. I wouldn't. I'd want her to be taller and have a better dress sense. Stop running yourself down. But I'm not lasting everything I'm wear. I'm never going to have a boyfriend. I'd soon even notice me. Then maybe we should get you some new outfits. I can't afford it. You need to pay for the IVF. Oh, we can splash out a bit before we start paying for it. Tell you what, 
Why don't you and me go into town and find you some knock -em dead outfits? Are you sure? Positive. By the time I'm finished, I'll make sure you look stunning. The lads will be begging to take you out. No-one could blame Jackie Corkill for looking elsewhere after everything she's been through with Jimmy, but another woman? I don't think so. <laughs> no, nor do I. It's probably just Leanne's poisonous turn-up to his old tree skin. I wouldn't take any notice. She hasn't stopped staring at us since we came in. Maybe. Going out with a man like Christy Murray has turned her into a lesbian, and she's got her eye on <gasps> you. <laughs> Can we not even joke about it, please? She's giving me the creeps. Stop being so paranoid. How can you be so reasonable after the whole false allegation fiasco? I'd just rather forget about it, really. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. Just trouble. Well, I can't see you getting busy now, so I'm gonna finish early. Make sure Fred's settled in okay. You'll be all right? Yeah, I'll just give our lunch a shout if I need to. How did he seem before? Just as usual, so. Oh, right. I thought he might have been a bit moody after Fred moved out. No, it's fine. Come on, you've not finished yet. Hello, son. You eating up all your tea like a good boy? You are, aren't you, love? Hey. Eh? You been OK? Easy on him lately. It's been hard on all of us. No, oh, well. Seems as everything's going through. Maybe we should start acting a bit more civilly towards each other. For the sake of nothing else. It's fine by me. Good. Hopefully we can get this divorce over as painlessly as possible. My solicitors told me what my rights are and what I should do next. And? I've replied to your petition. I'm not going to fight the divorce. He says if it all goes well, it should go through quite quickly. Good. So what did you say to him? Exactly what I thought. Nice one, Anne. Well, it needed saying. Hello, love. Do you won't be long? Thanks. Something up? Auntie had a go at me before. What about? Me checking out the Aussie early. She said I was being selfish. How can she say that? And she also says that I'm being unfair on you, putting you through all this. You're not. Are you sure, Rich? Cos I wouldn't want to be a burden to you. As if. I'm really glad you're all. Cheers. Smells good. Les Gossons Jay Mash. And a little bit of Dijon in the gravy. Gives it a real French twist. I saw it on Ready Steady Cook. Here's to us. Oh, to us. Lovely me, Hoverkins. Hiya, hon. Very cosy. You thought you were working late. Have you been cooking sausages in my flat? Oh, the gossages. I don't care what they are. You know how I feel about meat. Sorry, it won't happen again. I, um, put some mash and veg in the oven. Do you fancy it? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. just want to sit down. I am cream crackered. Oh, if you want to quiet nice in on your own, don't worry, cos we're going to have an early one. You staying? Well, I'm not sleeping on my own. I'm not in fresh, just next door. Oh, you don't mind, do you? No. Jimmy, I'm glad we're able to talk to each other properly again. All I wanted was a divorce. And now it's going through. No reason why we can't be grown up about it. Oh, good. 
I think it'll be better for Lindsay and the kids. Yeah. They're the most important thing, aren't they? I want William growing up feeling he's still part of a proper family, you know, even if we are divorced. Couldn't agree more. And um, you'll get all the access she wants. <laughs> Hang on. You can stop right there. What? I'm not giving up our wills. Jimmy, there's no way you'd get custody. Why not? I'm his father. I haven't done anything wrong. Come on, Jerry. Think about it. Be realistic. I am. There's no way I'm going to let you take my son off me. No chance. Outrageous. Cheek of her. What? Morrissey. Where for the party on Friday? What party? All of that and more tomorrow at 8. And if, like Jimmy and Jackie, you could deal with help in making divorce less painful, you can order a Channel 4 guide by calling 0906 520 4040. Calls are charged at £2.50 to cover the cost of the booklet. Supposing you've got... some dinner for me and Wills. It's all right. I've got a pie in the oven. We're going to share that, and then we're going to the swimming baths. In the morning, are we? All of everything we pay back it. It's brilliant. Well, you shouldn't be nipping out of school to do it. It's Wednesday, free afternoon. Have you no homework? Finished it? Well, why don't we go into town and find these new clothes you've been talking about? No. Well, give me 20 minutes to finish up in the salon first, and I'll meet you at home. Great. See ya. Yeah, OK, love. Well, it's really good of you. OK. See you later, Trill. I tell you what. You go and get your towel and your cosy, and I'll meet you back here in two minutes, right? Go on, go on, go on. Where do you think you're taking them? You know where I'm taking them. Why? Well, because all this, when you see them and everything, it's got to be sorted out. Well, I'll do that through my solicitor. Right now, we'll go in the baths. No, not today, you know. From now on, you'll be on your own. Oh, is that right? You're leaving, are you? Me and William are going to our Val's meet caravan near Talaka for a couple of weeks. Val's joining us later. At this time of year, I don't think so. He'll be better off here with me. No, sorry. We're going to Val's this afternoon and Wales tomorrow. Or are you going to kick off and try and stop us? No. A break would be good for Wales. Well, uh, Lisa's been on and um, she's asked me to attend a, a service at Susanna's grave this afternoon. She hasn't given you much notice, has she? Exactly, and she's only gone and put up a headstone without consulting me. I mean, can you believe it? Well, are you going? I can't very well stay away. I mean, she was my wife. And you want me to look after Harry and Emma for you? No, um, the children are with Katrina. I was wondering... I was wondering if you'd come with me. Me? Well, a bit of moral support and... Who else would I ask? Well, I don't mind. I mean, I'll have to go home and get changed. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, hello, love. How are you? Don't mention it. <laughs> Driving you mad, are they? What's that got to do with you? Oh, no, look, I'm sorry. 
I'm so narky. I even had to go at poor Mike yesterday. Oh, that's all right, love. How is Mike? He's doing fine, but he should be in hospital. He signed himself out. Why? Well, Ron and Rachel kept him in the dark about the break-in. Um... I can understand him wanting to be home, his wife and baby being exposed to that scum, but I just lost it yesterday. I had a real go at him. Oh, it's silly to discharge yourself, whatever the reason. I suppose the poor lad's got enough on his plate without me turning on him, but... I just don't know what's up with me sometimes. Hi. Hello. Hi. No, no one can go through what you've been through without it having some after effects. And here's someone else who's lost a bit of sparkle since then. Jessie! Hiya. Jack, just the girl I'm looking for. Fancy some lunch? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm mad busy. What's that in there? Yeah, yeah well, it's my VAT. I'm, I'm a bit late with it, you see. Well, you can spare half an hour, can't you? Oh, honest, I can't. I'm up to here. All right, then. Tonight with our Clayton Katie. Yeah, OK, fine. See you later. Don't tell me you couldn't manage a nice cup of coffee. Or a hot chocolate with a big dollop of whipped cream. Well, I suppose you could twist me on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone home? Guy? She's still at work. What are you doing home? Wait for me, Mum. What for? We're going to town to get some new gear for the party. All right, love. But it's supposed to be a surprise. You haven't blown Don't it. Don't panic. I haven't told her. <sighs> hey, just be careful, eh? I really want this Friday to be a proper surprise. She hasn't had a birthday party in Yonks. Hey, look at this lot. Party grub. A little present from your Uncle Christy. An all past these by date. <laughs> no. This time I check. Me mum? You haven't seen me. We're supposed to be here to relax, Jessie, not punch the clock. It's just that I told Raya. Right. Anything else for the Golden Girls? Hey, watch it, me laddo. I'm a long way off being a Golden Girl. These two can speak for themselves. No comment. Madam? No comment either. <laughs> Should we get some wine? Not for me, thanks. Actually, I'm going into town. You know that big discount store on Lord Street? Oh, yeah. It's closing down this week. Everything half price. Uh, even less. Come with me if you like. I'm game. But sorry, love, forget the wine. What about you, Jess? I told her I wouldn't be long. I only nipped out to the post office. Oh, surely it'd do you good to have a break. I know. I'm sure Ray prefer to come home cheered up rather than moping around the house. And don't you fancy getting the bird? Oh, go on, on, then. And you'll have to go and phone him first. Well, you can phone him from the bus stop before you go and change your mind. You don't give up, you two, do you? <laughs> well, how much have you saved? £35. It's not going to be enough, is it? Well, how about if I match it with another 35 Will you? Go on. Oh, thanks, Mum. What are you doing, Em? I just uh, nip back to get this. I do something to eat, but me and Della are going into town. She's spending her savings. Ah, and I ain't all right. I'll just make myself a butty. Right. Well, uh, I'll just go and get changed, and then we'll get off. All the perishable stuff is hidden at the bottom of the freezer. All the other stuff is in the tool cupboard, OK? We need time to get it organised. Have you asked her out for a meal yet? No, I'll do that later. Just be careful not to blurt anything out, and not to Steve and Anthony either. We can tell them on Friday. Nice, isn't it? It's outrageous. She could have. What? Morrissey. It says Morrissey, not a mention of the word father, nothing about the children. Yeah. But... Well, how could you do this? Hi. Sorry I'm a bit late. What the hell is going on? What, what sort of a, an epitaph do you call this? What's wrong? Susanna Morrissey. No mention of the fact that she was my wife, nothing nothing of the children. Max. It's an outrage. You should have consulted me before going ahead with this, this travesty. I'm sorry, Max, but you weren't married when she died. She changed her name even before you were divorced. We were together for 20 years. We had four children. You can't just ignore that. It says mother, look. It's not good enough! Look, the vicar's coming. Can we talk about this later? I want no part of this. Max, can you do something about this, please? He's really angry. 
please. If you could just swap this line over and put the others on the bottom shelf. I want that barbecue stuff I told this morning. Just shift off to the other end of the store and leave it to him. Hiya, can I help you? I'm just looking at go now. Hey, should you be in school? Hiya. Hiya. Well, looks like I need no worries about you serving coffee, isn't it? Yeah? Not exactly a crowd puller, is it? 90, please. Waste of time, in my opinion. Have you heard from Shell at all? Um, not a dicky bird. And I suppose you asking means that you haven't either. I've uh, just wondered. Mm. Wondering about Shelley. Her presence certainly lives on. I heard about that ding dong between your mum and Diane from the hairdressers. I just wish you knew how much trouble she's caused. I had more than my fair share of ding dongs when I lived on Brookside Close. People soon forget. It's not that. After what happened to Shelley, my mum and dad are getting divorced now. That all Shelley's fault, is it? I don't want to talk about it. You brought it up. I asked after that's all. I mean, think about it. Did Shelley actually do any worse than you? Helping yourself to another woman's fella? Me? Don't think I don't know you slept with my fiancé on New Year's Eve. I'm sure she didn't do it to get at you. Oh, didn't she? She's hated me since day one. And, um, well, she has got a point. Susanna did start calling herself Morrissey from the moment you split up. Well, that's irrelevant. She was married to me. Look, I'm going to have to get back to the office. And if rounds, I'll see you later, OK? Spite. That's what it is. Spite. Well, it's done now, and the headstone's been made. <sighs> Please. Got over the shock, have you? You didn't give me a chance to explain. Don't need any explanations. Me and Dave Burns are history. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. If it makes you feel any better, it wasn't your row on the A that split us up. How did you find out? Can you tell me? Don't worry. I don't want to know the grisly details. I'm still sorry. I was confused, Bev. I just thought if I slept with a fella, I'd make some sense of it all. I shouldn't have done it. So learn from it. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. While it lasted, Shelley was a good mate to me. Dear God, please forgive me. I know it's wrong to steal, but I can't help it. And I know you know what's going on. But why? Why has it all happened to me? When did you decide this? This morning. Uh, Why the? Boy. Thought we needed some time apart from each other. Live like this. Anyway, we're going to Wales tonight and then um, Wales tomorrow. Well, it's going to be miserable down there this time of the year. It couldn't be any more miserable than it is here. Listen, you're going to be a good boy for your mother. Yeah? All right? Come on, good to go. And what about work? Well, Ian yeah. is for a relief manager then. Oh, jeez. It wasn't up to me, was it? Come on, turn around. Come on, love. Hold me out. Hey, Hey. You get in. Try, William. Sounds soft, but have a good time. I mean, get your head together. Any chance of stopping this divorce? <laughs> oh. No, no, he hates me. I'm not 
long is it since you were last here? I'm not sure. I met my husband here. Oh, when was that? When Adam was a lad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. But it wasn't long ago. When did you lose him? Why does everyone presume I'm a widow? Oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I did presume. No, he's still alive, but I prefer not to talk about him. Cheers. Thanks for pushing me into coming out today. It's been really nice. We both needed a good laugh. We should do this more often. To the Golden Girls. <laughs> the Golden <Come> Girls. <laughs> girls. I could kill that landslad for starting that. I'm 47, so stop it. Okay. Your eyes? I feel calm. Because she's gone. She's done the right thing. She's left me. It's hardly that, is it? Whatever. It's fine now. My mum's destroyed. She's lost. Can't you forgive her? Have another try? Nah. I feel like a cloud's gone. Like I'm at peace. Oh, at last, no more hassle. Okay. Oh, like I said, just hassle. Well, I used to. Oh, yeah. Just get the alien then. I've got to go to the cash machine. Can you get one in for case? Do I have to? Charming. Joke. You sound like it to me. How long are you going to be? I don't know. Well, I can lend you a few quid. Is anyone going to get me a drink? <sighs> I've got to get a balance on that. If I don't send off a cheque for my mobile, they're going to cuss it off. Is it that agent? If no one's going to get me a drink, I'll get me own. I won't be long. What are you doing all setting it? I'm not. I'll get her a drink, OK? Only repeating what Jimmy told her Martin, and bang, she kicked off on her. She went with that girl who used to live over the shops. That's what her husband told her Martin. Don's been going on about this. I don't believe it. I know he hates Jimmy Corkill, but well, why would she blow up at our Diane? I'll tell you a secret about Jackie Corkill. You haven't had a fling with her, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Now this is serious. I had a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart with her when her Jimmy was, you know, going off the rails. She told me someone was in love with her. Really? Must have been that girl from over the shops. Do you reckon? Must have been. No wonder her fella went off his trolley. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you a secret. Ron had a bit of a thing with Jackie Corkill at one time. Only for a week or two. Did he? Really? He said they never, you know, I didn't believe him, but now makes sense, doesn't it? No wonder it was only for a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all right? I feel a bit odd. You and Jackie Corkill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too much brandy, eh? <sighs> oh, I feel all hot and dizzy. Come on, then, give us a twirl. How's it look? Oh, you look great. Marty, come and have a look. What do you think? Well, the skirt's a bit short, isn't it? It's not. And what about the top? Isn't it a bit low? She's 15. All the girls are into this. I bet all the lads are, I don't know. Oh, don't be such an old fogey. Come out for the party on Friday. What party? Erm, uh, just a girl at school. It's her birthday. Who is she? Where is it? Uh, now he's being old-fashioned. She's 15, isn't she? I think we can trust her, don't you? Just half an hour. That's all I'm asking. Oh, please, Beth. Can't Freddy down here? But he's filmed for an Indian takeaway for both of us. Oh, right, so my flat's gonna stink of curry and meat. Oh, we can open a window. Well, eat it at your place. I thought you said we had to make it look like Fred was living with you. Go on, then. Oh. Thanks, babe, you're a diamond. Yeah, but don't make a mess. You two left my kitchen in a right state this morning. Must have been about four o'clock in the morning. Next thing, Vinny steams in. He's a scout who runs Churchill's. It's a boss bar in Benetton. 
Anyway, Ackland's propped up in the corner with this basket on his head. <laughs> Next thing, there's this mad scream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then what? You right? Yeah. Ready for another? Yeah, I'll get him. Come on, shouts. You all right? Yeah. You sure? Well, they're both out for the count after half a chapter. Oh, shall I get it? Please. Hello. Oh, Jackie. Max, it's Lisa. Come in. How have you got the brass face to turn up here? You embarrassed me this afternoon. Yeah, and you offended me. You offended my children. She was my wife. Oh, for God's sake. Now, what's it all about? Is it some attempt to rewrite history? Wipe away 20 years of marriage, all for the simple reason that you never liked me and you didn't want me to marry your sister. No! I acted in good faith. I discussed the headstone with my mother. But you didn't discuss it with me! Oh, this is ridiculous. Why can't you grieve and let her go? She stopped being your wife way before she died. I want that headstone changed, a new inscription. You can't do that. It isn't the way to do things. Well, you'd better find a way. Otherwise, you can forget seeing my children. What? Guardian or not. You change that headstone, or you'll never see them again. Now, you get out of my house, and don't come back until that inscription acknowledges me and our marriage. Oh, this is absurd! Go! Max, you can't do that. Don't interfere, please. Lisette, take no notice of him. He's wound up, that's all. And who wound him up? What? I know your game. You put him up to this. It's all part of your big plan to get your hands on Harry. That is not true. I wasn't born yesterday. Uh, where's Jackie? She'll be here. She's busy. Give her a bell. She'll be here. Okay with you, Sue? Yeah, great. Shall I give it a ring? Just leave it, will you? <sighs> I hope your mother's enjoying being with our wills. Why'd you say that? Because when she gets back, the fight for him starts. And for this house, too. Don't be like that, Dad, please. I don't care how dirty it gets. I am not having a wreck in my life. I want wills. I don't want this house and all. What was Yasel at work then? Well, she's having to deal with all sorts of mess, that's all. Yeah, at last. Oh, someone's glad to see me. What are you having to drink, Jack? Let's go back to flat Oh, you're gonna even have the one? Well, what can I say when some dishy fella gives me an invite like that? No contest. We're supposed to be having a drink together. What's up? Nothing. Right. Should we go? Yeah. See you later. What's up with him? Well, it's nothing to do with him and Jackie, is it? What is all this lovely dovey stuff about? Just wanted to make sure you know how much I love you. Oh. Hey, listen, you sure you don't want to go in and have one drink with them? No way. Why not, Charlie? I've had enough of those two for a minute. Well, what have they done to you? Forget it. Everything's fine. You sure? Of course I am. OK, then. Looks bad yourself. See Jackie Corgan. She's a loser. Thanks for a lousy night out. Surprise! <gasps> you shouldn't be doing this. It's all right. Come in here. And from one bedroom where a couple are in agreement to a two-bedroom flat where a couple can't agree. Next in location, location, location.
up, Mum. You don't want to be late for your meal. There's plenty of time. I want you looking perfect. <laughs> Are you sure you won't come? It's not my kind of thing. I won't know anyone. Well, my dad and Andy will be there. Now you go. Have a good time. Gonna wait for me. What do you think? <laughs> See you later. Hi, friends. Do you want a pint? I want to know what's up with you. Not on top. You've been acting weird. I don't think Katie hasn't noticed that you've been off with her. You're imagining it. Will you just forget about it? Look, I'm going for a game of pool. You coming? Hey, you're not too heavy on that. You look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> well, hurry up, love. We don't want to be late. You don't have to book, do you? No, I know, but, uh, you know, Bev's bar on a Friday night. Don't want to wait around for hours. One babysitter reporting for duty. You look nice. Thanks. We don't look so bad yourself. And I thought I'd make an effort for my daughter's 37th birthday. Hey, that's classified information. <laughs> now, let's have a look at you, Adele. She's going to a party. That's nice. Just wish I knew a bit more about her. I told you. They all have to grow up sometime. You went to lots of parties when you were a teenager. Maybe it's just me being 37, eh? I'm going to hide this. I'll get her back from that meal as fast as I can. It's supposed to be her birthday. Don't you go getting her indigestion. Are you sure you can sort the buffet out in time? Don't panic. Just leave it to us. Uh... <laughs> well, fast as you can, love. I'm starving. I hope you have a nice time. You look really gorgeous, doesn't she? We have here, Amory. I've got four more of these in the motor. Shh, is still here. Right, sorry, mate. Quick, get him out the back. And I got some wine and some short stuff as well. Oh, right. Aunt. Anthony. Hey? What's the matter with you? What? Wake up, will you, son? And give your uncle Christian and get this lot out the back. Oh, yeah. Good. Here's your first 50 pounds. Cash in hand. Same gallons? Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Five pints and two whiskeys, please. Die, come on. Coming. <sighs> it's all sorted, no sweat. Who do you mean here all dolled up? Um, he's offered us a lift. Why are we going round the corner? Yeah, well, you see, it's forecast rain and uh, we didn't want to ruin you there. So, let's get going. You ready, Christy? Hey. To give us a lift. Oh, yeah, yeah. Couldn't we drop our Dell? Uh, our Steve said he'd take me. And bring her home. All oh, right. Have a good time. You too, love. Don't be late. Your penny on Dell, there's work to be done. She's got some guest lecture the one in college. I'm gonna try this concoction. It's guaranteed to blow your head off. <sighs> Not for me, thanks. I'll stick to this. I'll give it a try. Good lad. <laughs> Down in one. I'm not soft. I'll sip it, thanks, mate. Chicken. <laughs> Looks like you started early. Oh, me and our Amber as a sesh down the penny farm. Is she coming? Oh, well, was I inflict that on you, Pritchy? <laughs> you know, I like she's copped off. Thank you for small mercy. <laughs> Christy! Get oh, 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 yeah. on! Oh, I'm down your neck. <laughs> She'll end up sleeping on the floor. It happens every time. Who is she? She's Diana Marty's next door neighbor from the old house. You've met her. Yeah, just the ones. Oh, are you done? Are you cute? How are you? Ooh, is this your hobby? 
blonde vixen. I am pleased to meet you. <laughs> hey, did you show him that naughty little number you bought at Dyson Nickel Party? Uh, Happy birthday, love. Cheers. Thirty-seven, eh? I felt so old getting Ardell dressed up for that party. She was a little girl when I met you. Time whizzes by, eh? That's what worries me. Well, don't worry tonight. We're seeing the consultant next week. I still worry I've left it too late to have my own baby. Well, if we'd left it with the NHS, yeah, but we're going private. And don't give up before we've started, eh? Enjoy yourself. Right. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what did you buy of her? I just bought it to be polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, what? <laughs> Skimpy knickers. All oh, right. Come in! My dad said sorry, but he couldn't get the time off work. That's all right. You'll do as a stand-in. Here you go. Oh, thanks, sir. Get yourself a drink. <laughs> Yo, Lee. <laughs> it's right, lad. <laughs> Steve's very first, weren't you? Mm. <gasps> I better get another one of these. What exactly have you been telling me? I'm really sorry. It was at that stupid knicker party. Yeah, well, I know what. I know what she's like. Don't tell us anything. What's that? It's my homemade punch, and it's high octane stuff, and not for amateurs. And tough, Leo, cos I've got the last glass. Hey, no problems playing more in the kitchen. Oh, and there's um, another surprise for you in the kitchen. Auntie Cheryl was just turned up. Hmm. <laughs> Leo's funny. <laughs> He's like a dog on eats out of that Cheryl one. Don't know if it's still going on. I bet that's the only reason he come here. How can someone his age fancy that old slap? You'll kill yourself drinking that stuff. Well then, I'm very surprised that you haven't served me a bucket full bridge. <laughs> Right. Ooh, you look good enough to eat. Do you know that my sex life has gone down the tube since you started them rotten shifts? Excuse me. Oh, Del, get Leo a glass, will you? Hey, Leo. Yeah. Oh, doesn't she just look lovely, Lee? Oh, you really growing up, Del? Hey, come on. Leo. Get this down your neck. Make you feel nice and warm. Isn't that right? Yeah, you never know what might happen later. <laughs> Come on, let's dance. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Well, take your coat. <laughs> uh, you're from the doctors, aren't you? Yeah, that's me. I've just been to the bar, and Diane and her husband have just finished this suite. Thought you might want to know. I didn't know Marty had a secret agent. <laughs> <laughs> Have a soft drink. I'm on pills. Wouldn't be a show without punch, would it? Drinks in the kitchen. Oh, right. I'm surprised you got an invite after all that to do with Diane and Jackie. Look at this. Dregs. Yeah, well, that's Jimmy Corkin, love. Half of the course. No mark. <laughs> Excuse me, young people. Jimmy! Jimmy Corkin! 
haven't seen you for ages and ages and ages. How are you doing? Oh, you, you are still as handsome as ever. <laughs> Come on, let's go and have a mat. And besides, I need another drink. <laughs> Vodka or something. Have you still got your wine? Oh, come on. I paid the bill. Why'd you do that? Well, we've got to get back. I mean, your mum wants to get off. <laughs> she won't mind. No, no, we're. Uh, come on, Dyke. Time to go. You can uh, fetch your wine, will you? We've only been here five minutes. Don't be soft. I don't know. Half. Why bother taking me out if all you want to do is go home? You told me to enjoy myself. Now you won't let me. But it's your mum. She wants to get off. <sighs> this is a birthday night out to remember, isn't it? <sighs> Do you want your wine? No, I can't drink at home. You can. I can't. It's boring at home. I wanted a proper night out. <sighs> Never again. So Jackie's left, Jen? Yeah. yeah. What? Do you want another drink, Cheryl? Do you mind? We're talking here. We're getting a divorce. Have you been playing away? No. She has. <laughs> Jackie Gorgon, another fella. Another woman. A woman? St. Jackie Gorgon. She's a lizard. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Hiya. Oh, yeah. I just had to leg it down the part time arsey on the way. Dead here. Oh, oh, Enter the musical. Yeah. Steve, get a light. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Next time you want to take me out, forget it. Hey, don't be soft. You hounded me to get out of the house. Now you hounded me to get home. Die. Where's the fun in that? Thanks for a lousy night out. Surprise! <laughs> happy birthday, love. Oh, you smiled. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, all those fibs tonight. <laughs> you, with friends' party. <laughs> oh, I don't love you. Oh. Do you want a drink? Yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> oh, love, I must be thick as a brick. I never guessed. Oh, I'm sorry I get you such a hard time. <laughs> Dance for me. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Try my best, mate. Oh, I'm sorry about it earlier. It's all right. <laughs> Where'd you go with that, Cheryl? What are you talking about? Don't treat me like an idiot. I know you're going with her. So what? She's a slag. She's all over that Jimmy Corkill. At least he's old like her. She's bladdered. Why bother with her when you know I like her? Because you're too young. No, she's too old. <sighs> we shouldn't be doing this. It's all right. Come in here. So are you uh, seeing anyone at the moment? You know me. I don't need to see someone all the time. Have you uh, seen anyone since? You know us. <laughs> I haven't actually, no. It was good, wasn't it? While it lasted, yeah. I wish it had lasted longer. You're gonna get me a drink. Sure. Jets! What do you like? <laughs> and? Someone for you? Me? Here he is, girls. Come in. Hi, Ram. Hiya. Who's this, love? Melvin and Paige. Friends from school. You're out a bit late, aren't you? Been to see some mate, Charles. Yes, we thought we'd come and see Ant. We didn't know you were having a party. We're well, coming in, girls. Got loads of food and stuff. It's all right. Oh, come on. Come on in. Go on through the kitchen. I'll show you. Go through there. <laughs> Two beds, eh? Which one was it? Give you the Valentine, None eh? Of this. Well, go on, go on, entertain your girlfriends. Go on. <laughs> right, 
guys. I'm getting off. I just want to lie here. Lie with me for a bit. What about your mum and dad? They're having a party. <sighs> I can't. I'm on duty at six. It was lovely. All right. Try. Will you kiss me? Bye. Nice house, Aunt. And? Your mum and dad must be loaded. Don't know. Why didn't we get the sweets and stuff after school? Why have you come here? Because we didn't get what we told you. Woo! And you know what will happen if we don't. We'll kick your head in. I'll get it. Look, girls, I'm getting a bit worried about you. It's past ten, you know. Oh, it's all right, Miss Murray. We're going now. What, can we call you folks or get you the taxi? It's not far. We'll be OK. Show your mates out, Aunt. Thanks for the food, Mrs Murray. You're welcome. Bye. Oh, go on, eh? <sighs> I'm not sure he's going to make it to the Vatican now. <laughs> if you don't get us ten quid on Monday, you're dead. I can't get you that much. You better. <sighs> don't let us down, eh? What you need, Jimmy, is a real woman like me. We were attracted to each other the moment we met, remember? When? Lord Amber's wedding, you got all lovely, dummy. <laughs> you must remember Jackie kicking off. Uh, yeah. <sighs> I think I'll get going. Oh. Don't run out on me now. The night's young. Just let me go to the loo and I'll come with you. Is this your fella or have you bothered him for the night? <laughs> oh, God. Hi, gorgeous. Oh, what are you after? You're such a wild Yeah. in there, but he won't answer the door. He's been hanging up on me all day. You're not dropping in on him, are you? Actually, I was just on my way over to see me dad. Oh. Now, let's get one thing straight, shall we? What you said is not true. I'm not after Harry, and I didn't put Max up to what he said about the children, OK? Well, I wish I could believe you. Look, I think Max has been stupid as well. So I'll make it a promise. I'll do my best to try and get him to change his mind, OK? Thank you. I'll see you later. Hey! Aren't you going to ask me in for a cup of coffee? Uh, I'm tired. Oh, I could wake you up. You can count on that. Uh, listen, Sherlock, I'm not really ready for anything like that. That leather cow screws you up good style, hasn't she? Like I said, it's too soon. Well, I'll uh, buy me time, Jimmy. I could make you better. And I always get my mum. Nice. Why did you sneak up here? I was tired. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> of course I don't. Just enjoy yourself. Yeah. It was a lovely party. Thanks for the surprise. Are you getting me drunk? Yeah, I bet. I've just got to the stage where I fancy a gin and tonic, and there's no tonic. You sure? I'm sorry, that'll be me. I've just had the last bit. Do you want it? It's got vodka in, though. Oh, no, thanks, love. Well, no problem. So I'll uh, get some more from the garage shop. I'll send out Christy. Uh, I'll go with Leon. I think he's gone. I think he overdid it on the drink. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're all right, mate. Christy! You can do with a breath of fresh air. <laughs> what? <laughs> can you nip round the... <laughs> What's he like? Legless. 
I think it's down to me to go. I won't be long. I'll come with you. It's okay. I need to walk off all this vodka. Okay. No. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Bridget, thank you so much for sorting all this out. It's been great and I loved it. Thank you. But I've done my bit now, so you can sort out that article. <laughs> Better call me Katie, see if she's finished messing around with them computers. See you then. She wants to go and see a film later. Why don't you come with us? Nah. Go on, we can get something to eat. Nah, I'm going back to the flat after this. What is it with you and Katie? Nothing. Every time she's mentioned, you go all moody. I don't. Yes, you do. What's wrong with her, eh? Look, I'm not soft. I know there is. So what? Look, I hate saying this to my own brother, but I'm worried about her. I'm worried? What do you mean, worried? I tried to keep it to myself, but I can't. She came on to me. Every time your back's turned, she comes on to me. Yeah, well, you started it. Did I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got to stop this right now. Oh. Jay? What are you doing? Yeah, come on, come in. The party's just warming up. What are you doing out here? What's that? I just went to get some drinks for Marty. We ran out. Was you just with someone? <laughs> no, why? Because you got lipstick all over your face. Ah, right, that was that stupid Cheryl one. She's been trying to snog everything that moves in there now. Come on. to our Robbie. Is it really like Victoria's? Oh, yeah. One minute we were on the landing, the next we were on the bed, kissing them, making love. <sighs> you stupid. Go on with an underage girl and you a copper. Are you sure about this? I need to know the truth about how people see me, how people like you see me, what and all. I think you might be seeing another girl. Can a newlywed couple keep their hands off each other for a fortnight? A tall order next tonight in Can You Live Without Sex? Do with this. Got a bad head? <sighs> Just a bit. Have you forgotten what you done last night? What do you mean? I found you with lipstick all over your face outside the monies. Oh, that was Cheryl. Did you see the state of Marty and Christy? They were covered in the stuff. I'll tell you what, she's mad when she's drunk. Why were you outside when he arrived? I went to get some tonic water for Diane's mum. On your own? Yeah, why? Just Look, I'll get back. Hi, is Leo in? He said he was working at six o'clock, but I didn't see him come out. <sighs> He's still in bed. Is he taking the day off? All I know is he's still in bed. Can I take a message? Uh, no. It's all right. Thanks. What are you doing waking up at six o'clock in the morning for it to come out? See ya. <laughs> you 
Yeah. Want some more toast? No. Thank you. I don't want any more toast, thank you. Right, I think that's my cue to go for a jog. Don't know what's going on between you two, but you could cut the atmosphere in here with a knife. Later. What is up with you? Nothing. I'm not stupid. You were off at me at the film last night and this morning. What is it? What have I done to get you like this? Have you been coming on to our Robbie? Oh. Do me a favour, pet. Nip across to the garage shop and get me a packet of bacon for your dad. Uh, my purse is in there. They should have put her in a taxi and sent her home. As far as I'm concerned, when your mum and dad left Meadowbank Road, they should have finished with Cheryl Smith and that amber article. Isn't there enough change? No, um, well, you'll have to take that. On, get some milk as well, love. Well, go on. Your dad could be home any minute. He'll be starving. Are you going to sit there and stare at me all day? Aren't you even going to talk about it? Well? I can't believe he says it. Are you sure you've got it right? How stupid. Now, is it true or not? Do you even have to ask me that? Of course it's not true. Why is he saying this? You tell me. I've done nothing. I'd never cheat on you or even try to. Then why did he say it? I don't know. Why? There must be something wrong with him. How could he say such a horrible thing? I saw you the other night in Bev's, laughing and talking with him. Then when I walked in, you both clammed up. He clammed up? I remember that now. I thought it was weird. All he wanted to do was get away from you. That was obvious. But why would he want to do that? Swear you never came on to him. I don't need to swear anything. It's not true. I'm going to go in there and drag him out of that bed and find out what he's playing at. Too late. Jackie's left a note. Robbie thought it'd be a great idea for us to go to the lakes for a weekend. Surprise, surprise, eh? Light the fuse and then get off before it hits the fan. Jimmy, it's not true. I have told you. Like, if you don't believe me, that's tough luck. If you never came on to him, what's wrong with swearing it? Because you should trust me. And if you don't, you can get out of here now. Jay. Sorry, mate, I've just had the last two. Oh. You were well out of it last night. Is um, that why you got off early? <sighs> yeah. I'll tell you what, though, you were well shot of that Cheryl one. She made the right show of herself. <sighs> Not interested in there anymore, thanks. I know. I mean, talk about extremes. One minute you're with a woman who is old enough to be your mother, the next it's all go with a teenager. <sighs> what are you on about? <laughs> Don't act innocent, my man. She called around for you earlier while you were sleeping it off. And she'd been up since six in the morning waiting for you to surface. She must be dead keen. What is this? <laughs> don't play shy, mate. You've got that Adele Murray on your case. I don't know. I mean, you go to a mother's party and you end up copping for a 16-year-old daughter. It was just a one-off. So you made it, eh? <sighs> it was a one-night thing. That's all. <laughs> Lucky lad. I mean, I wouldn't have said no myself. She looked tasty to me, too. Well, just keep it to yourself, eh? I'm just gonna get a shower, see if we can get anything to sort me about. Oh, someone else have a good night at Diane's then. He certainly did. Your girlfriend was very generous last night, I believe. Eh? Snogging everyone in pants. If you're talking about Cheryl, I've jibbed her. Why? Because, like everyone said, she's too old for me. Oh, has she got to file someone else? I don't really care if she has. Surely it wouldn't take her very long. <sighs> Would he? Are you accusing me of carrying on with that old slag? Why? Have you got a guilty conscience? I wouldn't look twice at her, you know I wouldn't. Do I? She's old enough to be my mother, she's a tart. Well, who else wouldn't you look twice at then? No one! You had lipstick on your face. Before I saw you, I could hear all sorts of giggling outside. And then you're all weird at the party. Nikki, you were with me. I was having a laugh and a drink, and that's all. I wasn't with you earlier on, though, was I? Look, I've had enough of this. I'm going for a pint. Are we there, whoever she is? No!
You know, I told you about Leo. The lad across the close? Yeah. When are you going to get off with him anyway? I've done more than that. He came to my mum's party last night and we made love. Oh, <gasps> You did it with him? Never! I did. <laughs> right here. What was it like? Great. I wonder what it was really like. Go on, tell me. I still can't believe it actually happened. Yeah, um, they told me to come through. Nikki, I've cut my hands on glass and they said you'd have a look at it for me. Yeah, sure. How did you manage to do this? I had a row with Jay. I was angry. He went off for a drink and I slammed down the coffee jar and... I'm sorry, do you think you'll need stitches? Uh, I don't think so. I'll tell you what, I'll clean it up and take a closer look. One minute we were on the landing, the next we were on the bed, kissing them, making love. Didn't you make him use anything? No. Of all people, don't you remember Becky Watkins last term? What about her? She got pregnant on holiday by some Spanish fella. You called her all sorts for being stupid. He just used her. He didn't love her. Who got top marks in biology? That doesn't make any difference. Anyone could get pregnant whether they're in love or not. Right, come on. What? We're gonna get you this morning after bill thing. I can't afford that. It's 20 quid. And I have to prove I'm 16, which I can't. If you knew all this, why were you soft enough to go into it without, you know, a condom? It was just the once. I don't believe you. We'll have to go to the doctors then, get it on prescription. I can't ask the doctor for it. You've got no choice, come on. Hey, when did you have your hair done? Oh, first thing. Just felt like a change. Oh, looks great. What are you after? Nothing. It looks nice. So what are you going at, then? Just reminds me of someone. Oh, it's Victoria. What? No, you. Your hair. It's just like hers. Really? Yeah. Hey, any more so, and that Dr Dan will definitely be chasing you. Although, why are you even bother with them, I don't know. After what he put you through. Is it really like Victoria's? Oh, yeah. Do that again. What? That thing you've just done with your hair. Doesn't half remind me of someone. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, is it? Oh, I think she looks a little bit like Julia Roberts. It's in the eyes. Oh, Lance. <laughs> You're that good with a flattery chuck some my way. No, it's someone I know. So sorry. Shan't keep you a moment. What's going on with her? She's acting like she's had some kind of personality transplant. Oh, you don't know the real Leah. Deep down, she's always been like that. Just cut above the rest. Does that feel OK? Yeah, thanks. I should probably hear in a day or two. OK. You know, I turned up late for Diane's party last night. Yeah. Well, before I came, did you see Jay with anyone? How do you mean? There were quite a lot of people there. No, but was he with any girl? I don't think so. I need to know. Why? Well, when I turned up, I found him outside, Diane's. I mean, he'd said he'd been to get tonic water, but... When I was in the footpath, I heard giggling and that. Like, someone was kissing and messing about. Then he had all lipstick all over his face. Oh, I'm sorry. I think he might be seeing another girl. OK, let's go. Don't tell anyone, will you? No, of course I won't, no. See you later. I can't go in there and ask for that. You've got to, to be safe. Go on. Ah, oh, you've left your mother in peace, have you? Uh, yeah. Tell her I've defrosted some pork chops for your tea, OK? Mm. Bye, love. Bye. Bye. Can't go in there. Me nin will see me. Don't be stupid. You've got to. You need to get that pill and you've got two more days to take it, otherwise it won't work. I can't. I'm going home. Wait till she's got the bus. No. I keep on getting all nervous about this thing last night with Adele. Mate, <laughs> forget about it. Like you said, it was a one-nighter. Yeah, but... It's not as simple as that, you see. The thing is, she's only 15. God, I thought she was older than that. <sighs> you stupid. To go home with an underage girl and you a copper. It was the drink, wasn't it? I mean, she just seemed, you know, older. Mate, she's still underage. 
If this gets out, you could get kicked out of the police. You might even go down. I know that. And the big thing about girls that age, she's not going to keep a gob shut. to go in. We should be in school. This is more important than getting to school. Go on. Hiya. Hi. She's here again. I can't. I've talked to my cousin. They're not allowed to tell your mum and dad. It's all in confidence. Even if that near someone does know your family. Are you sure? Positive. Go on, dear. OK. Need anyone to sleep with me? I've taken some aspirin. I just want to try and sleep. I mean, then I just fuss around. I just want to be on my own. Doesn't she work in the salon on the Monday anyway? All right, Mum. Bye. Hiya. How can I help you? I, uh, yeah. I wasn't feeling very well, but I'm all right now. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. She's in a hurry. What's up with her? She says she's fine. You should have stayed and asked. What if you get pregnant? He only does it once. Next time I'll ask him to use something. It might be too late by then. Your mum's been trying to get pregnant for seven years. I know it's not that easy. Have you seen Adele yet? Oh, no way. You've got to sort this, man. I don't want to know. She's only 15. You've got to keep a lid on this. You've got to make sure that she doesn't tell anyone, and I mean anyone. How? Well, talk to her. I can't even face her. I'll have to have them. Mate, you've got to do it. Everything's on the line for you if this gets out. Oh, she never got so drunk. Yeah, and now the damage is done. So now you've got to limit it. And the only way to do that is by being a boyfriend. You're joking, aren't you? She wants to see you again, so romance her. Persuade her not to talk. Do whatever it takes for however long it takes. Leo, you've got to do it. Call her and talk to her. Can't I just ignore her? You know quite well you can't. Call in at the centre. Nisha. Hiya. All right. Have you got any lectures today? No way. Just wondered if you fancy coming to town with me, so I can get something to wear for tomorrow. Why was tomorrow? We talked about it last night. It's me Nan and Ray's wedding blessing. Oh, yeah, right. I'm sure your head's on another planet these days. Will you come with me, then? I've got an essay to do. Can't it wait? Well, I want to get it finished. You sure you'll be writing an essay? Look, don't start that again. I told you, the lipstick was Cheryl's. I want to get this essay finished so that I can have some time off on the Easter. Hi, love. I brought you these. Mwah. I brought you some squash as well. Do you want some now? No, thanks. What have you got? A sore throat? I keep getting hot and cold. You don't feel like you've got a temperature to me. I just feel terrible. I thought you'd be dying to get back to school this morning. Why? To see those two girlfriends who turned up the other night. They don't be girlfriends. Mm. <laughs> Look, she's done it again. Who does she look like? Mm. Maybe it's been like Sandra Bullock. No. Sadly, sir. Oh, I've got it. It's Victoria, isn't it? Well, I have had comments. Oh, what do you reckon, Lance? <laughs> Victoria one better watch out. One well, look at the new year when Dr. Darren's gonna dump her. Oh, you do have some mad ideas. Actually, Dr. Darren and I do get along quite well these days. <laughs> oh, she's got such a big heart, Arlian. After what that terrible pervert did to her, and she can still forgive him. I'm just going out for a bit of lunch. I'll be back in about an hour. 
Thank you. All right. I wouldn't blame you if you told me to get lost. But, well, I didn't listen to your side of the story. There is no side to my story. Your Robbie's telling lies. Why can't you believe me? I do. But why is he saying all this? Well, shouldn't you be asking him that? I don't know if he's back from the lakes. He didn't show up for work this morning. And his mobile switched off and all. Jackie isn't back either. And your mobile's off. What's he playing at? I want this sorted. What can I get you, Doc? Um, cheese sandwich and tomato juice, please. Dash of Worcester sauce? Uh, no, no, just as it comes, thanks. So, Leanne looking after you, is she? Yeah, thanks. What do you think of a new hairstyle, then? Uh, very nice. Thanks. Well, you didn't put much thought into that. Sorry, Wait, what was I supposed to say? Well, you could say that she looked beautiful, ravishing. I think her old look suited her better, actually. Sorry. Oh, well. At least you're honest, eh? I'd better pay this phone bill on the way home, or they'll be cutting me off. Do you want anything from the shop? I thought you were ill. Um, I've got a bit of fresh air. Do we good? If you're fit enough to go to the shops, you're fit enough to go to school. I hope you're not swinging the lead with me and your mum. No. I hope not. You're off to the big school in September. This isn't the time to be slacking. I'm not slacking. You're not going off it, then? I wish she was there now and everything would be all right. What do you mean? I mean... I wish I wasn't sick. Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. Mm. You'll be better soon. Would you leave this pig's mess in your own house? Uh, no offence there. She's just feeling a little bit under the weather today. I hope you'll forgive her. I'll, I'll have a word with her. Hey, are you trying to get me bankrupt or what? You can't treat punters like that. Sorry. Oh, I know what's been going on, you know. The clothes, the hair. If Dr. Darren doesn't fancy it, you've just got to get on with it. All I want is a bit of class. But everyone treats me like I'm some piece of muck, some nobody. Bev, I hate my life. No, you don't. I need someone with a bit of class to tell me where I'm going wrong. Not like that lowlife Christy Murray. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think you're going to get that round here. Why did we have to meet here? Couldn't I have gone round to yours? We, we don't want everyone to know about us, do we? Why not? Because we need to get to know each other first. Go out a few times and that you mean? Yeah, that sort of thing. When? I could go now. I've no homework. Well, I'm a bit tied up at the moment, you know, reports and stuff like that. Tomorrow, then? Uh, yeah, should be OK. Should we go for a drink or what? Well, I was thinking more about a film. Great. What time will you call for me? Uh, well, we should meet at the bus stop at four o'clock. Brilliant. I made up, we got together. In my room the other night. I can't stop thinking about it. Can you? No. Look, I'll have to go. Will you walk back with me? I can't. I've got to go and see my dad at work. Can I have a kiss, then? <sighs> yeah. I'll see you later. Bye, Leo. Oh, this is a surprise, Sam. Uh, what can I do for you? I just wanted a bit of a chat. Uh, sit down. Um, everything OK? Oh, um, yeah. But I was just wondering if you could give me some advice. Me? Well, I always thought you were a classy sort of bloke. Oh, really? You see, the thing is, I, I need to change myself, my image and that. Image is false. You should be what you are. But I'm sick of what I am. I need you to tell me where I'm going wrong so that I can change. Will you tell me? Honestly? Well, I want you to be as honest as possible, yeah? Are you sure about this? I need to know the truth about how people see me, how people like you see me, warts and all. Max, please tell me. 
to a finished bandage in her hand. And she came right out with it. Asked me if I thought you were seeing someone else. I didn't even know it was you that had seen to her. You don't think she suspects you, do you? I don't know, but she's convinced you're seeing someone, so this is over, finished, OK? Leanne? Wait! Look, please! I didn't mean to upset you! Hey! No wonder you don't disappear and act this weekend. All that stuff you said about Katie is crap. Says who? She says. It's all in your twisted mind. <laughs> Don't laugh in my face. She told me she wouldn't do anything like that. She's a liar. Don't you call her a liar? She has done something like that. Exactly like that. Ask her about the Musgrove brothers. Who? The lads used to live in Jackie's half fella's house, Luke and Ryan. She was seeing Ryan and screwing Luke at the same time. So if you're so sure about it, Ask her to explain that before you start calling me a liar. What are you talking about? About you and Luke and Ryan Musgrove. Nikki, I wouldn't do that to you. I love you. She wants to come round here and go to bed. Don't even think about it. What do you think, though? You're a picture. Nisha, I don't want to give you up. I've been coming on to Robin. All that in an hour long, Brookside, this Friday at 8. Don't forget, you can find out what's going on in the close in a few minutes when Jerome Leon Lopez joins us for an online chat. Log on to channel4.com forward slash talk. Next tonight, you might convert to Cabriolet after watching Druidy.